Today's video, we're going to show you a real life pitching lesson and how to deal with some of the toughest lies you'll come across. All right, so we, we worked with this gentleman on his pitching, and when he came to us, we first met out on the golf course because it's just the best place to do pitching. <laughs> and the issues that he had, so we didn't capture a before with his gears uh, data, but we did capture the after, and that's what we're going to show you today. The issues he had with his pitching was on those really bare, really soft, really tight lies from, say, 30 yards and in, he had a difficult time pitching the ball softly with enough loft, kind of having it land soft on the green. And the reason for that, we'll just cut right to the chase, the reason for that was, if you see his virtual spine number here, it's right at 90 degrees. It wasn't before that. He had a lot of tilt away from the target in, a, in this small pitch shot and would add more tilt on the downswing, causing his hands to to really kind of hold that lag angle and really jut forward. And it also would drop his spine angle from this down the line view. So he would get more tilted away from the target, hands going more forward, so more leading edge, and getting closer to the ground with his upper body. All of those things led to a lower ball flight when he caught it clean, uh, which wasn't often the case. And uh, kind of that harsh driving the opposite of soft landing pitch shot. So we went to work, really got his spine more neutral, got him feeling like he's keeping his chest at least keeping the same level he starts with. So we did that all outside, and then we brought him inside and just kind of confirmed everything on the gear system. And we can see here at the start, he's got roughly... 55 degrees, 56 degrees of forward bend, and then basically an, an 86, 87 degree spine angle from the face on here. So we wanted him to keep most of that, and we also wanted him to set up with more weight, more pressure on his lead foot so he can place the ball a little more forward in his stance. You can see as we scroll him forward here that he does a really good job. His feel was that he kept that he actually raised his his throat, his the top of his chest up a little bit as he was striking the ball. And he winds up pretty much keeping it very close to where he starts at and keeps his spine very neutral coming down. So we, he's got room now down there by the ball. So when you're facing worse lies, and especially those skinny lies off of really soft turf, you know, old divots, those type of things, the last thing you wanna be doing is dropping down, forcing you to kind of bend the arms, uh, to really change your levels coming into the shot because the impact is, needs to be so precise for these shots. We don't have that nice cushion of grass underneath the ball. So this got him to do that. Then as you can see here in this fan between his club shaft and left arm, he's starting to decrease that angle right off the bat. So now he's not being forced to hold that angle. He's not being forced to overly expose that leading edge coming into the ball. And all of those things got the ball kind of his words, feeling that the ball was kind of gliding up the face a little bit, coming out of there nice, soft, and high, and, and kind of landing and, and not really checking, just kind of landing like a sack of potatoes. So if we take a look at what we did here from the top view. So this is the same swing we just looked at. So we're going to see his, we got him set up probably 65, I think it was 65 to 70% of his pressure on his front foot. And even with that amount of bias towards the front foot, we're still going to shift forward in virtually every golf swing we make. And we can see his sway and his thrust. Now the big difference is he's not just driving his hips forward. He's letting both his upper and his lower body shift even a little bit more forward onto his front foot, keeping that spine neutral and making nice clean contact, preserving the loft on the face, not de-lofting it. And I want you to take note here of his rotational numbers. So when, when he would drive the hips forward, the upper body would tilt back, hands would be driven forward. He really limited his ability to rotate his upper body through the shot. And we can see right here how as he's unwinding, the hips haven't moved a whole lot in the backswing. They don't need to, we don't need that power. The upper body is swinging, 
Now right through here, the upper body is going to start to catch the lower body. So really at impact, we have very similar rotational numbers. That's kind of ideal for these pitch shots. So we're not driving, we're not creating any kind of extra uh, speed booster or any distance provider, so to speak. We're doing rotation, loft on the clump face, that, and then you can see here is rotation, the upper body overtakes the lower body. All those things help preserve the loft on the club face and allow you to hit those nice, clean, high, soft pitch shots from really the most difficult lies pitching with where there's no grass under the ball. It's oftentimes that muddy. We even actually hit, before we came back inside and recorded these, we were hitting off of old divots, off of sandy lies, off of muddy lies, and he was still able to hit these nice, soft landing pitch shots, struck very cleanly with the club face because the bounce was being used properly and the leaning edge wasn't being dug into the ground. He was a happy camper. Wanted to share with that with you guys on how to deal with those nasty lies, those pitch shots. Keep your levels. Have yourself some room so you can kind of extend through the shot so you can provide enough bounce to get the ball up safely and softly. 